Hello and welcome to my channel Lab Easy. In today's video, we will be discussing protein estimation by Bradford assay. How to detect protein concentration using Bradford assay. So today's video is divided into three segments, the chemistry of Bradford reagent, application of Bradford assay, and the standard curve. So coming to the first segment, which is the chemistry of Bradford reagent. So Bradford reagent was first introduced by Dr. Marion Bradford in the year of 1976. And the principal component of this reagent is a dye, which is Kumasi Brilliant Blue G250. Now, this dye stays in three different states, which is like when it stays in cationic form, that is when it is protonated, it shows red color. When it is neutral, it is green in color. And when this dye is anionic, it shows blue color. So this dye can change color according to its charge. So whether it is cationic, neutral or anionic. Now a little note here is that Kumasi Brilliant Blue G250 and Kumasi Brilliant Blue R250, these are two different dyes. So we know that Kumasi dyes are used in protein gel staining. And the dye which is used in gel staining is R250. G250 is usually used for protein assays like Bradford assay. And G250 can also be used for gel staining, but it is less sensitive than R250 in that case. Okay, so the Bradford reagent that uh, we commercially purchase comes in cationic form. So it's an acidified uh, form of this um, Kumasi G250 dye. So it comes in cationic form. So it is usually red in color. So the Bradford reagent that we purchase is usually red in color. Now, Bradford assay is a colorimetric protein detection assay. What I mean by this is that when Bradford reagent is mixed with proteins, protein samples, it changes color and it usually turns blue. And by the intensity of the color, by measuring the intensity of the color blue, we can estimate the concentration of the protein. How does that happen? So I told you that this Bradford reagent comes in acidified form. So in this acidic environment, this Kumasi dye binds to the proteins. And this dye binds to the basic and aromatic amino acids of the protein, which are like usually arginine, lysine, histidine. And uh, in the binding of the dye to the protein, other interactions like van der Waal interactions, hydrophobic interactions are also important. So the dye binds to the proteins. Now, what next? So there's a spectral shift that occurs when this particular Kumasi G250 binds to proteins. So this is the structure of Kumasi G250, this big structure. And as you can observe that the protein the basic and the aromatic side chains of the proteins help in binding of this dye. And um, this Kumasi G250, when it is protonated, that, that means when it is red in color, it has an absorbance maximum of 465 nanometer. So the peak of the absorbance is at 465 nanometer. But when this protein uh, or the dye binds to the protein, there's a spectral shift which occurs because of which the protein dye complex now gives this blue color with an absorbance maximum at 595 nanometer. And the most important part here is that if there are free amino acids, if there are peptides, if there are proteins which are lesser than three kilodalton in weight, they do not produce any blue color. So it has to be proteins which are higher than three kilodalton in weight, which when binding upon binding to the dye will produce this blue color and giving the absorbance maximum at 595 nanometer. So basically what happens if I go in with detail, we will see that Kumasi G250 donates its first electron to the proteins. And because of this, what happens is that it destabilizes the uh, protein structure. So it donates its first electron to the charged amino acids on the protein, the basic, the positively charged amino acids. 
and because of which there's a destabilization of the protein structure which exposes the hydrophobic pockets of the proteins and this facilitates the binding of the dye to the protein because this comasi g250 can now bind to this hydrophobic pocket and uh, in this interaction this sulfonic acid groups which are present on the comasi g250 these are the acid groups which are present on the comasi g250 they help in binding to the basic amino acids which are um, the lysine histidine these are the amino acids and this binding produces a blue color so when this dye is stably bound to the protein it produces blue color now of course the binding of the dye to the um, to the protein is of course dependent on uh, how much positive charge will be present on the protein surface so the dye which is cationic it is binding to the positively charged amino acid residues on the protein surface and it is producing blue color so now how do we apply this chemical reaction that is taking place for estimating protein concentration so that comes with our second segment which is application of the assay so as we can understand from here that is the amount of the blue anani form of the dye which will be present after the reaction it will be directly proportional to the amount of protein that is present in the sample so what we do is we take spectroscopic measurement so we use spectrophotometer uv vis so uv or visible spectrum so it is done in visible spectrum only and we use this uv vis spectrophotometer to take spectroscopic measurement of what is the absorbance and what is the od the optical density of the particular sample after binding to the comasi dye so this is how it usually looks like so we take a control which contains only the buffer in which the protein is present so where no protein is present right only the buffer so this is a control sample where we also put uh, where we also mix this bradford reagent and then we take increasing concentration of protein sample so in this direction you can see the the protein concentration is increasing and uh, when we mix it with the bradford reagent we can observe from this series of cubits also that the intensity of the blue color also increases with increase in protein concentration and then we take the absorbance that is we measure the od in a spectrophotometer and then from it we can estimate the concentration of the protein so because this is an assay where we need a standard we perform a standard curve we we uh, do a standard curve with a purified protein which is bsa bovine serum albumin but i'm coming to that part later in the last segment of my video but first i just wanted to discuss some of the problems which may arise while doing this experiment so the problems can be like the protein can be a low molecular weight protein so if this is a protein which has molecular weight less than 3 to 5 kilo dalton then we um, will not use this assay we will not be able to use this prac code assay so we might use some other assays like bca for determination of the concentration of the protein next thing is in many of the protein samples so suppose we are um, taking a cell lysate and when we take cell lysate be it a bacterial lysate or be it a parasite lysate or be it a mammalian cell lysate so when you are taking cell lysate what we do is that we use mild detergents to uh, lyse the cells and to take out the proteins in the solution so detergents usually interfere with bradford assay and detergents may cause precipitation of the bradford reagent so to avoid this kind of precipitation what we can do is that we can dilute we can serially dilute the protein sample so that the detergent level is less and less and there are um, certain limits of how much detergents we can use there are other um, some other 
chemicals as well, which also interfere with Bradford reagent. And there are limits of uh, the particular reagents that we can um, use so that our Bradford assay is not interfered with those particular chemicals. So that also has to be considered while doing a Bradford assay so that we uh, can keep reduced concentration of detergent in our sample. So next is, uh, we might also have very high absorption in our protein sample. So in that case, what happens is that um, if we have very high absorption, then we will not be able to um, measure the concentration of the protein correctly. So because of which, again, we need to dilute the protein sample so that the absorption can be less. And it can be so that our uh, concentration, the measurement of concentration can also be done correctly. Next is when we perform the standard curves, just as I was describing, if we have to do a standard curve with BSA, sometimes it occurs that the absorbance in the standard is very low. So if that happens, then we have to check our reagent, that is a Bradford reagent, whether the reagent is too old or not. So the Bradford reagent has a particular um, expiry time after which it should not be used. And the Bradford reagent also has to be kept in dark. And if that is not maintained, then it, this reagent might get degraded. So we have to check whether our reagent is working correctly if we have very low absorbance in our standard samples. Next is, if our sample is highly alkaline, then this acid does not work properly. So we need to reduce the alkalinity of our um, sample. And that is also by dilution of the of our sample. Next is we should not use quartz cubit. So what happens that uh, this Bradford reagent can often react with um, quartz cubits. So the best uh, to use in these assays are glass or plastic cubits. And before performing um, the Bradford assay, we should take out our Bradford reagent, which is usually stored in refrigerator. Uh, so we should take it out from the refrigerator and uh, bring it to room temperature so that our reagent isn't too cold. And if it is too cold, uh, it might um, interfere with our um, protein uh, estimation. So these are the few points which we need to um, keep in mind while performing the Bradford assay. First thing is that we need to check our reagent. We need to take it out to room temperature. And then we need to uh, perform, uh, we need to um, serially dilute our protein so that our the protein sample is not very a high, uh, does not show very high absorption. And then uh, we need to incubate the protein samples with uh, Bradford reagent in dark. So this is also very important that we incubate our protein samples in dark. And then we need to, after like for 10 or 15 minutes, after which we take out the samples and we take out, a, we measure the uh, absorbance or the OD in spectrophotometer. So that is the application part. And then we will move on to our last part, which is the standard curve. So this is how a typical standard curve of Bradford assay looks like. So for this, we use purified protein BSA, which is bovine serum albumin. And what we do here is that we prepare our main stock of 1 mg per ml of BSA. So BSA is usually available in powder form. So we measure, uh, we weigh one mg of powder and mix it in one ml of water. So the final volume is one ml. Oftentimes what we do is that uh, weighing one mg can be too less. So often we do, uh, uh, we prepare a higher concentration of BSA, which is around five mg per ml or 10 mg per ml. So what we do is we weigh 10 mg of BSA and we mix it in water and so that the final volume is one ml. So that gives our um, mother stock of BSS 10 mg per ml. And then from that 10 mg per ml, we dilute the sample to one mg per ml. So how do we dilute? I'll just give you a very brief overview of it. So we use this V1 S1 equals to V2 S2, this formula. And for diluting from 10 mg per ml, so we need to suppose take X ml or X volume of the main stock. 
which has this 10 mg per ml concentration and we need to prepare our suppose 1 ml of the final volume of the diluted solution and it will also have concentration 1 mg per ml so from this we can take out the value of x which will be 0.1 ml which is 100 microliter so what we do is we take 100 microliter of 10 mg per ml bsa solution and we mix it with 900 microliter of water so that the final concentration of bsa is 1 mg per ml okay so we dilute this 10 mg per ml solution to 1 mg per ml and then we prepare substocks of 2 microgram per ml 4 microgram per ml 6 8 and 10 microgram per ml so we dilute it and um, uh, prepare increasing concentrations of bsa solution and here also we have to use the same formula v1 s1 equals to v2 s2 so what we do is from 1 mg per ml which is 1000 microgram per ml we take x volume and we prepare 1 ml of the solution and of 2 microgram per ml concentration so here x will be 2 by 1000 which is 0 0.002 ml which is 2 microliter so what we do is we add 2 microliter from the 1 mg per ml stock with 998 microliter of water so that 1 ml of 2 microgram per ml solution is prepared similarly for 4 mg per ml we take 4 microliter from the stock for this 6 microliter from the stock plus rest water similarly so this is how we perform um, this is how we um, prepare uh, the substocks in the microgram per ml concentrations and then what we do is that we take the 5x bradford reagent so the bradford reagent which is of 5x concentration and our cubic volume is 1 ml usually so what we do is that from 5x we have to make the concentration of the final bradford reagent the final concentration will be 1x so in 1 ml how much do we have to add again the same formula we are going to use so from 5x we are going to make 1 ml of the solution of 1x concentration so x here so here s1 i'm uh, replacing by x so sorry um, v1 i'm replacing by x so here x will be 1 by 5 which is 0.2 ml or 200 microliter so to prepare this bradford uh, 1x bradford reagent we need to add 200 microliter of 5x bradford reagent to the final volume of 1 ml so what we do is that we take 800 microliter of our substocks which were 2, m, 2 mu, microgram per ml 4 microgram per ml like that so we do take 800 microliter of substock plus we add 200 microliter of 5x Bradford reagent then we incubate for 10 minutes around and finally we uh, before incubation we have to mix it also properly with the Bradford reagent and then we take spectroscopic measurement that is we measure the OD. So now, um, how do we, uh, how does it look like finally? So we measure the OD at the maximum, which is the 595 nanometer. And suppose we get OD in this range. So first will be obviously a control, which will have zero concentration of BSA. So which is, uh, which we will take as blank So this will have, this blank solution will only have 800 microliter of water 
with 200 microliter of Bradford reagent, 5x Bradford reagent. So this OD we will consider as zero. Next, we will uh, take the increasing concentrations of the, uh, we will take OD of the increasing concentrations of the sample. So suppose we, we get this kind of um, OD like So suppose these are the different ODs that we uh, get. And here, one more thing that I want to just mention, that is, um, we also have to um, take three measurements. That means, for each concentration, we have to measure the OD three times. That means we have to do it with three um, solutions of the same concentration and we need to measure the OD three times so that then we can average the OD. So suppose these are the average OD at 595 nanometer. So next what we do, we take these values and we transport it into Excel. And finally, we plot this in Excel. So in x-axis, there is concentration of BSA, which, we, which is known to us, which is in microgram per ml. And in y-axis, we plot absorbance at 595 nanometer. And from this, um, when we um, take this plot, we draw a straight line. We try to draw a straight line through our points so that we can determine the slope of this line. So the equation of the line is y equals to mx plus c. And this m will give us the slope of the line. So this, for example, this, what is shown here, that y equals to 0.108x. So y equal to mx. And here m, we are finding out as, as 0.108. So this is the value of slope that we are obtaining from this standard curve. And this is the slope value that we will use further for our actual experiment. So next, in the actual experiment, what occurs? So this is the experiment. We had already obtained the value of slope as 0 0.108. And then we, um, again, prepare increasing concentrations of the protein sample. And we take one control, which will give OD as 0. So this is blank, again, which does not have any protein. And uh, these are the one, two, three, four. These are the four samples. And these samples we should take a triplicate. And finally, after incubation, we measure the OD. And then we again uh, take out, we again uh, calculate the concentration of the protein from the, we can directly um, calculate the concentration of the protein from the OD. So by using the same equation, y equals to mx plus c. So y is absorbance and m is the slope which we already know but we do not need uh, sorry we do not know the concentration of the protein so by fitting it into this equation y equals to mx so we can do this y by m will give us x so if we have the od for example 0.5 and we have our m as 1.108 uh, from all, uh, from our previous standard curve so this will give us the concentration of the protein. So by this way, we will be able to calculate the concentration of our protein sample in mg per ml unit. One important thing that I should mention here is that whenever we are performing this Bradford assay, we should remember that our absorbance of the sample, the OD of the sample should always be less than one. Why is it important? Because when the OD, the absorbance, exceeds 1, the curve, the graph loses its linearity. So we are able to determine this slope from the linear portions of the graph only. Right. So this is x-axis and this is y-axis. Concentration and absorbance. But we should always remember that the slope holds true for the linear part of the graph. If the OD reaches 
above 1 then what happens the graph loses its linearity so the linearity of the graph is very important so that is why if the graph is not linear we will not be able to calculate the slope properly and that is why we will not be able to estimate the protein concentration correctly so we should always keep our od lower than or lesser than one and if that is not the case then we have to dilute our protein sample so that the od remains less than one and we can calculate the, the protein concentration accurately so thank you for watching this video i hope you find this helpful if you like my video please share please comment and subscribe thank you so much